time for another good math video, yeah, uh-huh, let's do it, whoa, dude, what happened to your legs, man, oh, my tadpole buddy, oh, oh, you look so sad, oh, this is just breaking my heart, you know, I really wish there was something we could do, you're just, yeah, you're really, you were right, you're like, going back like in time, you're, Life cycle is really, really messed up. I mean, I mean that in the best possible way. I mean that I hope that, oh my goodness, uh, you keep this up, you know, you're not going to be even a tadpole anymore, you know? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, that's just, um, I'm sorry I had to take that moment out emotionally. That just got me right there in my heart there. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll, we'll leave you here on the page, okay? And uh, since you really can't swim anywhere, oh, I mean, you know, we'll just leave you right here. Oh my God, poor fella. Well, hey, uh, it was nice you at least made it back to the next video. This is the third video, the review three of chapter nine, and we're going to finish this up. So let's do it. Yeah. First things, here we have Randy. It says, Randy is training for a race. She makes a table that shows how long it takes her to run different distances. Running time and distance, you can see the title of the table. We have distance in miles. The time is in minutes. Crucial units of measure there. And you can see here, the distance after one mile, it takes Randy 10 minutes. Okay, we're two miles, it takes 20, and three miles. Yeah, by lo looking at that, immediately you think, ha ha. Do I know what the rule is? Because it does say down here, write the number pairs as ordered pairs. Okay. Then write the rule to describe how the number pairs are related. I like that word, related. All right. Well, let's do that part A. The numbered pairs, it's pretty obvious what we need to do there. We just need to write them out. So I'm going to start off with a 1, 10, 2, 20. You get the drift. So now the rule to describe, pretty simple. We are basically the rule is to multiply the number of miles by 10. That's it. And that's what you can see right here. Times 10 gives us that. Times 10 gives us 20. It works our way down. Now, what does part B want us to do? Part B says graph the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Okay, we're going to make this harder. No, this is really fun. What I like about this is we have our x and our y axis. And these are ordered pairs, so we have to remember x always starts our plotting on that grid. So here the first one was 1, 10. So you can see we got this little intersecting lines here, the 1 and the 10. Then we have 2 and the 20. And finally the 4 and the 40. Now we just need to draw a line. And I think our line looked something like that. Okay. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, number 13 says a scientist made a line graph that shows how a bear's average heart rate changes over time. You know, I really love all these real problems they put in through our math. This is really cool because it's like we're learning all kinds of stuff in the process. Okay, I need to take a look at my chart first. I like to look at my table. And it says here, this line graph, what do we have here? Okay, in June, heart rate, okay, beats per minute. We have the month, changes in, okay. So it looks like in June, it's pretty much close to almost 140, even increases a little bit in July. Okay, ooh, now I see the line graph. We're coming down, it's decreasing in August, September. Ooh, does it look like a big drop off here? September down to October in one month, it drops 20 beats. And then it just kind of keeps going down a little bit more gradual, but by January, it's only at 80 beats uh, per minute. Ooh, that's very fascinating. Woohoo! All right, let's see. So for numbers 13A through 13C, select or for each statement. Ooh, that makes a lot of sense. Do you think there's a, like a typo here? I think so. Anywho, it says the bear's average heart rate is at its highest in July. Average heart rate. Well, I thought July was actually the highest. That is true. It is highest in July. Absolutely true. I'm blue. Do, 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 do. Okay. Focus, Mr. Warren. Okay, the bear's average heart rate increases by 10 beats per minute from July to August. All right, I'm going to go to July. Here's July. Here's August. Hmm, last time I checked, increases means it goes up. This is going down. From July to August, it's going down. No, no, that's false, sorry. 
Oh, I love coloring in the little bubbles. It's so much fun. Okay. The bear's average heart rate is at its lowest in January. Okay, there's January. It's right here at the end. Yeah. Okay. Ah, believe that. Yeah. Nice. This is so easy. Don't you just love math? I know you love math. Let's go to the next page. Oh, no. Our tadpole. Look at his... He's an egg now. Oh, my goodness. He really is devolving. I guess, is that even a word? Devolving. He's not evolving. He's doing the opposite. Oh, my goodness. Poor guy. He's going to be an egg. And then pretty soon he's not going to even be here anymore. How, what a weird thing. Poor, poor thing. I caught up in that time warp and, you know... Not having the gravity and the change of time, well, it's a pretty complicated thing. He tried to explain it to us, but you know, that's really too bad. Anyway, maybe we just put like a little, a little happy face, you know, kind of, oh, sorry. I know that was kind of mean. Okay. Well, it is kind of remembering him, the little two eyes that he had, you know, it's kind of like his mouth right here. Maybe a nose. No, just oh, I'm so sorry, buddy. Okay. The table shows the total number of tickets sold for the school play each day for five days. As you can see, day number one is 20 tickets sold. Day number two, then it's 30. Day three, 45. Hmm, that was by 10. Now that's changing. Now it's 15. Then we go to uh, day four. Look at that. It goes up to 75. So first thing is we have a coordinate point of one, or ordered pair, excuse me, uh, 120. So here's one, and there's 20. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a little dot right there, a point. And this point does have a name. It's 120. Cool. And let me do 230. Two, go all the way up to 30. And I think I'm just going to do these, rest of these, in Flash Gordon speed. Okay? Okay. I think we did what it asked us to do. Was there anything else down here we're supposed to do? I don't know. Okay. 15. 15 it is. The graph shows the relationship between the amount of milk and water used in a recipe. Determine a rule that relates the amount of milk to the amount of water by writing the correct term or value from the tiles in each blank. What in the world are we supposed to do here? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, let's, let's unpack this problem a bit slower. We have a graph over there. I do see that. It does show a relationship between the milk and water. Okay, milk and tablespoons, water and tablespoons. Okay. We have one tablespoon of milk. You have four tablespoons of water. That's this little recipe. All right. Now it says to determine the rule that relates the amount of the milk to the water by writing the correct term or value from the tiles in each blank. And it looks like we have subtract, add, multiply, divide, and then we have some numbers. Okie dokie. Let's get started. Rule. Well, I look at that relation. I see 1, 4, 2, 8. Hmm. I see maybe multiply by 4. 3, 12. Hmm. Times 4. 4 times 4, 16. Woo-hoo. Got it. Oh, the rule. Oh, what? Blank the amount of milk by. Ah, so this is where one of these words comes in. And that, my friends, is multiply. Multiply. Okay. The amount of milk by, and we just did that, which was four, cuatro. Okay, now, that's it. That was all, that was so easy. Oh, it's going to get harder down here. Is this the last problem? This is our last problem, folks. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm happy. I'm just not happy for our little tadpole guy, okay? I do feel bad for the, uh, I just, he said he had some scientists that were helping him. I, I hope they broke through and, I don't know. Maybe we should, maybe we should just take a moment of silence. All right, now we can get going. Stephen is buying a new mountain bike on layaway for $272. Wow, that's a lot of money. If he pays $34 each week, how many weeks will it take Stephen to pay for the bike? How can making a table help you solve the problem? Well, when I think of this problem, I, of course, I'm wanting to divide immediately. However, I have to think about how would a table help me well here is the table that i was referring to that you could how can making a table help you solve the problem well if we put the number of weeks along with the amount of money paid you can see that it increases each time by the 34 dollars that is one way you could have done it 
However, there is another way. There is. And it's called division, my friends, and I'm going to go ahead and do that just because this is how I would attack this problem if I had the choice. Since he is going to pay $34 each week, and we're asking how many weeks will it take Stephen to pay for the bike, it's equal payments. And that lets you know that we're talking about division. I would take the 272. I would divide that by the 34. Okay. And now let's go ahead and see. Will 34 go into 27? It will not. 34 will not go into 27, which means we have to figure out how many times will 34 go into 272. Well, I don't know about you, but that's not that easy to figure out. A mathematician? I am not. However, I do know some math tricks. One math trick I might try is rather than trying to see how many times 34 will go into 272, let's just break this one apart. And then let's take this apart. Because really, we could say that this is 270, and then this is just 30. Well, how many times will 3 go into 27? A little bit easier, huh? It's going to be 9 times. Now, because we have some here in the 1's place, it's probably not going to go 9. It might go 8. But you could always try. And I'm going to go ahead and try now. Now that I'm guessing it's going to be 8 times, I'm going to take 34 times 8. Shh, nobody knows. So 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. We're going to add that. 24 plus 3, 27. Woohoo! Yeah. 272, leaving us with 0, and it went in there 8 times, and we make sure we put that above the 2. So, now to put into words what my understanding is. Well, yes, we determined it was 8 weeks. That answers that question. The how many weeks? And then, to answer the next question, yes, I can make a table that shows how much Stephen pays each week and the totals until I reach 272, which is what I did. And with that... I go, uh-huh, can you feel that? Woohoo! yeah, we are done. Yes, this was three videos, my friends, and this is the last of the chapter review for chapter nine. Now, my friends, I do believe it's time. What? Wait a second, I'm getting something. Was that? Oh, I heard somebody say, hey, but Mr. War, you have another page up there. Oh, okay. Oh, my, it's our buddy. Hey, it's the tadpole guy. That we've never given him a name. What's your name? His name's Tommy. Tommy the Tadpole. Oh my goodness. Tommy, what's going on? You made it. What? Oh, I see. The scientists. Oh, they did it, uh, an experimentation. I see. They put you in a chamber with increased the gravitational pull, therefore resetting your space time. Okay, this sounds really confusing. Okay, well, hey, you're, you're back. You're back as a tadpole. Goody. Now you should start going the other direction and you'll be in a frog someday, right? <laughs> All right, you guys. I think Mr. Mora has been on the air too long. Hey, live long and prosper.